Good morning and welcome to another praying devotional where your personal ministry is our primary focus. The final message in the book of Joel is hope. Beautiful, unchangeable, everlasting hope. Amidst the locusts, the warrior nations, the brokenness and the environmental challenges, God gave hope to his people. He's just like God. It's a kind of hope that we read about from the prophet Habakkuk, another minor prophet. The prophet acknowledged the challenges around, but he determined to not lose heart. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 and 18 reads, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, Though the olive crops fail and the field produces no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God, my Savior. Joel depicted all the things that Habakkuk spoke about in, his, in these verses. Joel spoke about the fields being ruined, the wine vines being destroyed. In fact, Joel 1 verse 10 reads, The fields are ruined, the ground is dried up, the grain is destroyed, the new wine is dried up, and the olive fails. It's not just that there's no more new wine, but the very vine to produce the new wine is dried up. Sounds like all is lost, doesn't it? But our God is a God of hope. Paul tells us this in Romans 5 verse 13. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. A God of hope is he. And this God of hope imparts hope to his people. Thus, all his plans for us include hope. He tells us this in the very popular Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know my thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you future and hope. Hope is a character trait of God. And God expects that once we come into fellowship with him, we will begin to experience this hope. But there's something else. This fellowship that God calls us into requires us to follow his instructions. I'm going to read Joel chapter 1 verses 13 to 14. It says, put on sackcloth, you priest, and mourn. Wail, you who minister before the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, you who minister before my God. For the grain offering and the drink offerings are withheld from the house of God. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. I feel like we've lost the urgency in prayer and fasting. We spend a lot of time with self-improvement and there's nothing wrong with that. We invest in our businesses and that's great. We spend time trying to learn new things and new ways to make money. None of that is bad. But relatively speaking, when you compare all that we put into the temporal activities, how does the thing of God compare? How much time are we putting into prayer and fasting? The scripture summons the people to come and spend a night a whole night in sackcloth, meaning praying and fasting before God. A whole night of prayer and fasting. I can't remember the last time I did that, but I hear the voice of God calling us back to a place where we understand the urgency of the time in which we live. Why was it urgent? Because the Lord's day is approaching. And it is closer now than then. 
And in between now and then, the plagues and the abomination and the evil that the enemy presses on us can only be overcome if we spend time in prayer and fasting. The succession strategy is prayer and fasting. And why? Not because there's any value in our words, but because our praying and fasting draws us closer to God. It forces us to refocus on our Heavenly Father rather than all the issues that are bothering us. And then God rewards our hope. He promises to replace all that the locusts had eaten in the book of Joel. Not some of it or the important parts of it. No, God says, I will restore everything that has been taken from you. And then we hear, whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. That just sounds like sweet relief. It feels like the beautiful end to a film that had you on the edge of your seat. All that anxiety that you went through finally mellows into God saying, I will save you. So despite all that's going on around us, we have hope. Despite the facts of your situation, the truth to us is God says, I will restore you and I will save you. Finally, Joel records the last words of God to Israel through him. And they read Joel chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. But Judah shall abide forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will acquit them of guilt of bloodshed whom I had not acquitted. For the Lord dwells in Zion. For the Lord dwells in Zion is a reminder to us that God will never leave us. It's a reminder to us that God is unchangeable, that God is steadfast, and so are his promises. Therefore, our hope cannot wane. We cannot lose hope because we trust in an unchanging, steadfast God in who is all our hope. So like the prophet Isaiah, we can say and we can be strengthened by the truth that all those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and never faint. Let hope spring up in you anew every single day because your hope is not in everything around you. It is in the God who never changes. And we're praying. Gracious God of hope, we're so grateful to you, Father, that your desire for us is a life of hope. Life can get really tough and anxieties can wear us down, but we thank you, God, that despite the facts of our lives, the truth in you is that you will restore and you will save. We walk into this new day hopeful, filled with the anticipation that you are God is taking care of everything that needs to be taken care of. God, we walk into this day boldly committed to spending more time in prayer and fasting. We thank you, blessed Holy Spirit, for being with us. And we thank you, Christ, for the sacrifice of the cross. We give you all the glory and all the praise because you are more than deserving. And thus we say, Amen and Amen. Walk into your day filled with hope. Let the smile on your face tell the world that you have hope. And when they ask, let them know your hope is in Jesus Christ. As always, I want to say thank you so much for being with us on Frame Devotional. If you've not yet subscribed, now is your chance to do so. And please share with others and invite them to become a part of our community. I have to tell you, right, that my wish for you and your loved ones is that you all be blessed. <laughs>